Hello everyone and welcome to this live intuitive energy update along with some support and guidance for your beautiful intuitive soul. Today is August the 24th, 2017 and my name is Lisa Lyle and this is my space here on Facebook, Wisdom of the Heart, Soul Alchemy and I welcome you and I thank you for being here. I, in fact, thank you for being on Mother Earth at this time with um, all of us. Hello to everyone's show. Oh, Michelle, hello. So nice to connect with you. So just before we connect, because it's been a, whew, I don't even know what to say. It's been an interesting ride these last few days. Um, during, just before, and post the eclipse. So let's just... Take a few minutes and settle into this space together, settle into this heart space, and clear away any lingering negativity that may be within our fields that would um, affect our connection here today. So I'm very excited. I hope you all enjoyed the eclipse wherever you were. And even if you weren't able to see it, there's not a single doubt in my mind or heart that you were able to feel it. It was wonderful. I made some homemade viewers here and um, had some people over and we witnessed that magical moment um, in our evolutionary history together. A number of things were coming through. First of all, I felt greatly supported by the energy of our ancestors in spirit. And their desire, the messages I have been receiving, and they're still, good morning, Colleen, and them, they're still working strongly with us, is what um, the message is that they kept re sending was that we are here birthing a new earth. We are here really ushering in a new paradigm, one in which all souls, all lives upon this planet are valued and respected. And they really were encouraging us. I know there was a lot of information out there via mainstream media and here on social media that really was cautionary. Like there was a lot of fear being generated as a result of the eclipse. And, and there were things like, you know, stay in the house and we shouldn't be out watching it. And even, um, you know, the, the tribal people of the planet, they were going to be inside because that is how, they've, how they always did it. And so I tuned in and I, and I was questioning around that because all the guidance I was receiving was in fact to be outside, to be connected with Mother Nature. And even if we weren't watching or even if we weren't in the line of visibility of it, we were certainly encouraged to breathe it in, to welcome the new energies that were, were being, um, first of all, um, blacked out. Hi, Gina. Um, and then we were to welcome all the new light coming to our planet. And so the strong message I was receiving from uh, the ancestors was to get out, enjoy it. Remember that we have evolved generations beyond where, um, you know, some of the first people of the earth were in the time that they were living. And so our ancestors really understand our need to um, create new ceremonies, create new rituals around, um, you know, um, I want to say cosmic events, around galactic events. And so even for them in their time, there was a lot of fear around that because you have to think they didn't have the technology that we have. They weren't able to predict like we can when these things are going to happen. And so you have to imagine what they may have been feeling as the sun moved, or as the moon moved in between the earth and the sun and blocked the light to the planet. For us though, it's a different time and we're really here to evolve beyond what we have known, evolve beyond what we have been, um, what we come from. So 
even now the the energy of the ancestors is still strongly around and they're encouraging each and every one of us each and every one of you watching this message to create your own ceremonies and rituals that feel right and true for you those things that light you up and fill you up they really don't want us to be <clears throat> caught up anymore in the net of that fear-based energy that tells us there's something we ought to be afraid of. We have to remember the sun is what supports life on this planet, right? We need sunlight to grow. Hi, Rossi. Um, the, the plant life needs the sunlight to grow. So do we. So with this eclipse and, and the moon coming in between the sun and the earth, there was a moment where that source of life-giving light was blocked. And then it moved, then the moon continued its path and it moved beyond and the light returned again. And in fact, new light began to filter through and come through to us. And so we're really in this point, even still, we're three days post-eclipse now, we are still in the midst of receiving new light codes. Hi, Asha. I'm great. I hope you are too. Um, and so what really the, the strongest message I want to share with you today is to do your own thing. Our ancestors and the, the forefathers, those who walked this earth before we did, are really encouraging us to step out there on our unique path, one that's supportive and works for us, yet is also inclusive and supports the whole. We aren't in this alone. Although I'm here sitting by myself and you may be by yourself where you are, we are intimately connected and I trust you feel the connection. Since the eclipse, you may have been feeling a number of things. You may have been feeling very energized by everything that's gone on this week, or you may be feeling incredibly depleted and tired. It's really important that we each listen and uh, listen to and honor what we're feeling. So um, I know for myself, the last 48 hours or last 36 hours or so, I have been completely exhausted you know and any time is good time for a nap i say <laughs> so i've been really taking it rather slowly this week and just being really gentle and lots of self-care and self-love practices you know lots of warm baths and um, working with my crystals and all of that good stuff and drinking lots of kumbacha my homemade brew i'm gonna take a sip right now which is really great for our gut health. So whatever you're feeling, just honor where you are and don't allow yourself to get too caught up in the information that's coming from outside of you. It's really hilarious because um, about two weeks ago, I was guided to a book by a beautiful sister of the heart of mine, um, the Magdalene Manuscripts. <laughs> So we were talking online and I went immediately and I ordered the book. Funny, funny enough, I thought the book was arriving today and this is what arrived instead. So clearly I made a mistake in the ordering. I have since rectified that. But I thought the universe has a very funny way of getting our attention and our spirit guides and our, our star family um, connections really seek to support us at all times. So this arrived in my mailbox today and I was like, what? The Arcturian Anthology? And just reading the back of it, this is not the book I intended to order. <laughs> it's what arrived, so I guess I'm meant to read it and I will. Um, but this talks about a number of Ascended Masters that many of us feel connected to um, in this experience now on Mother Earth, Sanat Kumara, Yeshua Ben Joseph, also known as Jesus, and Mary Magdalene. And so I thought it was really, really funny. I got a good laugh. First, I was like, they sent me the wrong book. And then I went back and looked, and it's actually, this is the book I ordered, thinking I was ordering something else. So 
trust the things that happen in your life. Trust what comes to you, expected and unexpected. The unexpected stuff is the best stuff. And this is often where we'll find the beautiful gems that really support our further expansion into the beings of light and the vessels of love that we each are. Another thing that was coming up a lot during um, pre and post eclipse, it's still around, is this energy around family, family of origin. And many who connect with me and many who will be connecting with this video and, and even those who don't are likely or have likely experienced, I want to say, revelations or there have been um uh, there have been <laughs> i'm trying to find the the word to i i can feel it, it to vocalize it's a little bit <laughs> I'm, I'm at a loss right now many of us will be feeling various energies around our family of origin and these may be um, energies that bring us closer together as a family unit or help us to stand more independently in our sovereignty as a being of light, as a child of um, the one creator. Here on the earth to leave our unique mark. Here on the earth to use our voice. So this was another, <clears throat> and my, as I say this, I get ready to say it, the voice, the throat is clearing. Um, so we, you know, the, so what it is, we're here to use our voice and we are here to use our voice to lift others up. We are here to use our voice to bring people together. So it's really important now that you honor what you're feeling you speak your truth and do so in nonviolent ways there are nonviolent ways to communicate and often we get so caught up in the human um, condition ego um, that we we communicate to be right we communicate to to make our point to we communicate to convert people to our side as if there's sides we talked about this last week there truly are no sides so it's really important to speak up and there's been a huge um opening um activation through the throat chakra as a result of this eclipse and it was happening before but certainly during the eclipse and within the circle the moon circles that I facilitate in this most recent one, almost 90% of those in the circle were dealing with throat issues. And this really speaks of, it is time for us now to speak our truth in all situations. We can't be responsible for how others feel about what we're saying. And we certainly need to let ourselves off the hook if we do feel responsible which brings me to another point another point of clearing and healing that has, is taking place collectively as well as personally within our individual experience is this idea of shame and guilt and many of us have operated within this vibration for lifetimes and most current this lifetime so shame is, is the, the best way I can describe it, is shame is feeling that there's something wrong with us. And usually this shame is projected on us from outside of ourselves and, and rather early in life for many of us. So, we, so what happens when someone tells us to be seen and not heard or someone tells us to stop being so out there and playful and all of that, then we go into that little child, that little child, and, and I feel the biggest wound um, happened for most people between the ages of seven and 14. So within that sacral chakra development. So as we're told we should be seen and not heard, or as we were told that stop talking such foolishness or whatever the story may be, we feel ashamed of who we are. So we hide who we are. And then as life goes on, then guilt sets in. 
right? Then we feel guilty for the way we think, the words we say, our actions. So shame is what someone else projects on us and then we accept as our own. Um, hello, Brooke. I hope you're out of pain now. I can relate. Um, so shame is projected on us by others. And then guilt is how we operate from that vibration of shame, right? Because it's like, oh, you know, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't do that. Um, I'm not worthy. How do I have... Um, what gives me, Lisa Lyle, the right to be so in your face? Well, and then we operate from guilt, right? We say things or we do things and then we feel guilty about what we say and do. So this is a vicious cycle which we're now asked to clear because shame and guilt are only really, I feel at this point in time, useful for supporting us on our own healing journeys. So if you're still feeling ashamed of who you are, let me tell you, you are a beautiful, divine child of creation, of our creator, who was born to the earth with an abundance of magical gifts and your own unique creation, which is your medicine. So your creation is what you share with the world and what you share with the world is your medicine that you bring to the world. So don't feel ashamed and know that you are so worthy and deserving of love, time, and attention. And that begins with you offering those beautiful gifts to yourself, the gift of your time and attention. And the most beautiful act of self-love is honoring and respecting all that you feel that flows from deep within you. Now, guilt Guilt again is a useless emotion, really, unless we're working with it to support our expansion, our personal development. Um, so, you know, oftentimes, and, and I used this example earlier this week, as parents, those of you who are tuning in who are parents, many of you will have experienced guilt within that parent-child relationship. And I'll speak from my personal experience. I certainly have. And I probably spent a number of years operating from a place of guilt because of choices and decisions I had made for myself, which had a direct impact on my beautiful child. And so I often overcompensated because I felt so bad about the choices I made, or I felt so guilty, like, how could you break up a family, per se? That was my situation. And then, you know, and so oftentimes in that interaction with my child, he knew how I felt about, um, you know, moving from the house with his father. And so, you know, in his way, now he was not maybe consciously or maybe so, children are wise and wonderful. He played on that and he really, you know, he from his level of development and understanding and maybe his level of feeling his own self-worth certainly used my guilt to his advantage and maybe I allowed that. So we're also called to let ourselves off the hook for that kind of stuff because if we continue to operate from that space we are supporting a whole other generation to continue those patterns and really um, those of you who connect with me we don't want to continue these patterns and in, in um, we really don't so it's really time now that we move beyond that and really allow ourselves um, Allow ourselves a clean slate. Allow ourselves, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, and you know, I can see people commenting how we give in because dad works away and mom's at home and mom's at home being mom and dad and, and everything to the children. And we have to stop because our children um, are far more resilient than we give them credit for. And we are far, far wiser than we give ourselves credit for. And we have to, I mean, I firmly believe that we choose our parents. So I believe that my little man chose me to be his mother. 
And with that belief or with that understanding, then he has and I have all it takes to create the most supportive environment, to create the most loving um, environment for both of us. And he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. And I have to stop feeling guilty. And I do. I don't feel guilty <laughs> anymore. Thank God us for that. But if you're feeling any of that, please know that this, and this is, I guess, where I was trying to go when I was talking about how stuff from family would have come up. Because this shame and this guilt often stems from the family of origin, that family that we were born into. And many of us, as much as we love our families, and I know that we do, many of us are here to grow beyond that particular um, vibration. And many of us are here um, in a position to heal the generations that came before us. So trust in yourself and trust that you are wise enough to know what is right and true for you. Um, what else? I'm just trying to see what else has come up since the um, eclipse. I think those were the main points, really. It was a really beautiful day. Um, I did find myself really being, getting a little bit irked by the level of fear that was generated around it. And the acronym for fear that I keep hearing over and over and over these days is false evidence appearing real. So don't take everything at face value. Like, don't believe everything you see. <laughs> You know, don't believe everything you hear. Take it into your heart and then decide from that space if it's something that resonates with you, resonates as true for you. And if it does, then, you know, take action accordingly or whatever it may be. But not everything that is um, presented to us is truth. There's a lot of... Um, um, deceitful deception energy being cleared right now through each and every one of us. So I thank you and honor you for all the beautiful work that you do um, to nurture your beautiful heart. So with that being said, I'm going to just pull a few cards for us here and see if anything else comes through. This came out quick and this came out quick. Okay. <laughs> So the one that came out first was this sweat lodge, which really speaks to me again of what we've already spoken about um, it, earlier in the video, that this is really a time to create your own ceremonies and rituals. Maybe not, we're not all going to have an opportunity to go to a sweat. They're wonderful if you do get an opportunity to go. Um, absolutely the best thing I ever did for myself was to attend, um, well, I've attended a few now, but certainly the first experience was absolutely incredible. And so this really confirms that we are here to create our own ceremonies and rituals. And, and to know that we are supported in creating new ceremonies and rituals. You know, if we, if we keep doing things the way they were done 500 years ago or 300 years ago, it may not work today in 2017, right? So we are here. We've evolved 500 years. So, of course, there's going to be um, other things that come through us and stuff that we're going to be remembering through our, um, uh, from our connections or our, our experiences in other lifetimes, other timelines. Yes, I know, Gina, we did a sweat together. Um, and then this card came out, Flowing River. So we are meant to flow. That being said, I'm going to have another drink here. <laughs> So we're meant to, we're meant to move. Nothing um, stays the same and stays in one spot except maybe a tree. I love my trees. They, they stay where they're planted, right? Um, and then their seeds get scattered on. So they move beyond that original point of being planted and connected to the earth. We, on the other hand, we have two legs. We can move around. We can walk. Look at my arms. They're moving. They're flowing. The blood flows in our body. Our, you know, our, um, um, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. That might be another effect of the eclipse. Like mind farts all the time. I, I start talking to them. I'm like, where, 
where did that go? Bottom, bottom line is, is we, nothing stays the same. And the quicker you catch on to that uh, truth, the quicker that we grasp that and accept it, then the quicker we're e able to settle into the flow of life. And nature, I always go right back to nature because Mother Earth and Mother Nature are beautiful um, guides and examples of how everything changes and nothing stays the same. You know, where I can feel it in the air here. We're still in summer, but it feels like fall is right close by. It's a month off right now, but it's starting to change. And I noticed some of the leaves on a vine in the yard that were red the other day. And so, again, this is a reminder that life is cyclical and we are meant to be flowing. And I would like to believe that this time next year when we connect in this way, will have changed and transformed so much. Um, and it will be visible through our physical vessel because as we change, the amount of light that we're able to shine through changes. As we love ourselves more and truly settle into the beauty that we are and truly settle into the understanding that we are worthy and divine spiritual beings here in human form, then that shows. It shows through our actions and our words and our eyes. We can see it. So remember, life is fluid and flowing. And really Virgo, um, we're in the sign of Virgo now. And Virgo really teaches us about flexibility and our ability to be flexible and move from one situation to another with ease. So may we all practice being like a flowing river knowing that we can <clears throat> we can move around any perceived obstacles because often the obstacles are in the mind not actually in our life experience so i'm also seeing this here this beautiful golden light is really and then the pink up here so what is your source of power well the source of your power is your ability to unconditionally love yourself because when you can unconditionally love yourself and honor and trust what you feel and know, you offer that beautiful gift to others. And you show others how to, you, you show others that they are also worthy and deserving of unconditional love. So that's what I got from that card. Let's see some goddess guidance here. I won't be doing any one-on-one -on -one readings, but I do plan on coming online tomorrow and pulling some cards for those who connect with me live. I'm not sure yet of the time. Um, I am a mama, so I have to, oh, <laughs> I could cry now because of, um, I'm going to just go back and see if any of you can intuit which beautiful goddess came forth. I showed you this book that I got in error. That because I was really looking for another book and she's come here so this is so beautiful I just I really do want to cry um, it says the teacher awakens when I connect with Mary Magdalene I always connect with the beautiful divine feminine energy and there has been a lot of healing work that has taken place on the planet I will say since 2012 directly um, guided by the beautiful Mary Magdalene. First, we had to move through the energy of clearing that sacred whore vibration within ourselves, and we did that through the support of her. Because you have to understand, in her lifetime too, we also were just talking about guilt and shame, and there was a lot of this projected on her as well. And so she completely relates and understands our own um, struggles. Just one second, I have to get that little dog. Talk. Isn't she adorable? That's Luna. Hmm. Say hi. <laughs> okay, so she completely understands our um, our need to um, uh, our need to have held on to this energy. 
also when she came around there was a strong a lot of a lot of clients that I was working with um, we were we were coming up with a lot of trauma from their own personal experience and uh, she is adorable and she's the most loving little thing so we were dealing at the time with a lot of our own personal trauma and for many who are of my age and and maybe a little bit older as well as possibly younger as well there was some interference and a lot of people I know um, experienced childhood trauma and abuse and um, were interfered with particularly through the root and sacral chakra so sexual abuse was pretty prevalent and certainly not talked about in the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, um, and even into the 80s. We just began, we've begun to, to scratch the surface of that, and it's still a pretty prevalent uh, vibration upon the planet. So Mary Magdalene supports us in clearing the guilt and shame attached to any of those things that may have happened to us that we did not consent to in our lifetime. She also reminds us, and my girls from the moon circle, you'll love this because here we have the three flowers. And I just did a ceremony for us in this most recent moon circle with my moon flow, as well as flower mandalas that I created on um, the shores of Lake Ontario. And the intention of that ceremony was to support the reunification of the trifold flame within. So when we speak of women, we speak of that trifold flame as maiden mother crone. When we speak of all of us um, as a whole, we're really speaking of the divine mother, the divine father, and the divine child. And the inner child energy has been coming up a lot because it's the inner child that really wants to be one of the main guides that leads the way and in fact wants to lead you back to that space of enjoying life happy and free, um, carefree, and yet many um, alive right now don't remember a day when they were happy and carefree. So we're getting back there through our own personal work. And Mary Magdalene tells us that the teacher awakens. So the fact that she says the teacher awakens says to me there's a teacher waiting to awaken inside of you. There's a teacher inside all of us. And this is where we come back to that beautiful throat chakra where we've done so much <laughs> opening and clearing through of late. The red on this is also speaking to me of, again, our close and intimate connection with Mother Earth and as women with our moon flow, with our blood each and every month. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it live on social media that if you are a woman who still has a monthly cycle, <laughs> that the greatest gift you can do for yourself and in fact for our beautiful planet is to use your flow in ceremony. So that would mean you would be using a diva cup to gather your flow and um, collect it and then create ceremonies and rituals around returning your blood to the earth and it is incredibly magical. Um, I received the guidance to do that many, many years ago didn't follow it right away um, and have been actively and really with great honor and respect doing that for the last three years and it has greatly supported um, the expansion of my own gifts opening up. The message on the card says something, you have something important to share. Follow the in inner call and don't let anything stop you. So don't let anything stop you. And really the only thing stopping you is that bridge from your mind down to your heart. Get out of your head and into your heart because your heart will not lead you wrong. And some may say, oh yeah, but I fall in love too easy. I do this, I do that. That does not, does, you know what? This is so funny too. That does not, your heart is the most beautiful aspect of you. Your sensitivities and your vulnerabilities are the most beautiful aspect of you and that's what the world needs this is hilarious because I thought I was pulling from the guidance uh, the goddess guidance card until I just looked over here and I see the guidance guide uh, go goddess guidance cards here so I didn't actually pull from the goddess deck I pulled from the keepers of light <laughs> so this is a keeper of light card and Mary Magdalene came through I was wonder you know wondering which goddess so let's pull from the goddess card and see who comes through for for us now that is so cool 
I really seriously thought I was working with this deck. Ah, this is beautiful too. Luna, no, no. Siege, Siege, I don't know, Siege. I'm not really sure how to say the name. <laughs> um, it says quiet time. So this is something else. And this goes back to the ceremonies and rituals we create. This goes back to in the silence we hear the whispers of our heart. In the silence we find we, the answers that we seek come through us. And in fact come to us from the collective team of light that supports each and every one of us. This imagery on this card is taking me to the hermit card. And it's actually not surprising because we are now in Virgo season. Yay! And Virgo, the tarot card that is associated with Virgo, is the hermit card. And so it feels like this entire month for all of us, this moon cycle is going to be intense. And we've already started with the, the new moon and eclipse, and we're working up to that full moon. And then we've got, we don't have our Virgo full moon, which is really late this year until September 20th or so. So it's usually around now that we would have it. But this really speaks of um, in silence and meditation and in your own spiritual practices, your psychic gifts have an opportunity to grow. And if we see the green on the outside here, what I'm really feeling, green and purple, master healer, it is time to connect with the master healer that is you. It is time to connect with your natural, your natural gifts of healing, those things that flow easy to you. And for some, I mean, for me, I really am starting to think it's speaking because I love to talk. Um, and apparently I've always loved to talk. And, you know, we really have to hone in on our strong suits and those things that really fill our cup. And so maybe it's time for this month for you to just almost go into a bit, not a silent retreat, right? Because I know many of you probably have families you live with and you may have jobs that you leave the house and go to. So you can't walk around not talking to anyone. When you can, though, if you could just quiet down and not talk, maybe you have to take public transit to get to work and you don't have to talk to anybody. I know we like to try to engage, but here in North America, so... Full moon is September 6th, and then that is the full moon in um, uh, Pisces. And then we have the Virgo new moon. So um, we're talking about the new moon, this whole moon cycle. So yeah, up until the 6th, so this full moon that we're coming up, that's coming, we're coming up to now in a couple of weeks' time, everything that's come up with this new moon and eclipse is really going to be ready to be released then. And many of you will be actively releasing things over the next two weeks. And then at the time of the full moon would be a wonderful time to create a ceremony, to burn stuff away. I love fire ceremonies and full moons are a beautiful time to do a fire ceremony. Write stuff down and throw it in the fire with intention with intention because this is the most important key in anything we do anything we say anything uh, any of our actions any of our creations it is the intention behind it and that is truly what people um, feel and the people we serve through our healing gifts that is what they feel they feel our intentions behind the the things that we are doing for them whether it's a reading or an energy session or creating a piece of art or a piece of jewelry, whatever it is. Put your most loving intentions, infuse love in everything you do. So the message from this beautiful goddess is take some quiet time alone to rest, meditate, and contemplate. So prayer is asking for help. We ask the universe for help. In meditation, we quiet down and we receive Okay, when we pray, and prayer is a beautiful, beautiful tool for all of us. When we pray, we have to let go of placing any desired outcome on that. Like, when I was a child, I used to pray all the time. And I used to pray for specific things. And I used to put these really ridiculous demands on, you know, the universe creator who I was praying to. And I'd be like, if you're real. If you really exist, make that branch fall out of the tree. 
that's the kind of silly stuff I did. And it never happened. <laughs> it never happened. And these prayers I was making at that time would have been between about the age of 7 and 12. I was had all these really demands, outrageous demands. If you really exist, then you will put my family back together. Well, that never happened. So by the time I was 14, by the time I was 12, I was pretty... Um, I was pretty angry, I would say I was probably depressed, and I was full of fear. And that stayed with me. I, I operated from that vibration from about 12 to 24, 25. And then I turned things around. I turned things around. Nobody turned my life around for me. I turned it around through choices I made for that for myself. So. Please know that when you pray, just let it go. Put your prayer out there and trust that the universe will answer. They are, they're already working to answer that prayer. And they will do it in the best way possible for all involved. Not just for those of us who are praying. And as a child, I was always praying for myself because I wanted certain things back in my life that were gone. And they it never... It never materialized the way I wanted. So I've learned as I've grown up and matured a little bit that to, the best way is just to send out your prayers and trust the universe has heard and they will answer in a way that's supportive to all involved. And like I said last week, my beautiful Uncle Reg always used to say, Lisa, if you pray, why worry? And if you worry, why pray? So there's no point for us to say a prayer and then keep worrying about what we've just asked for help with, right? So we just have to let it go. And this is what we're learning now. And it's really the best way to live. We'll feel better <laughs> about ourselves and about our experience when we do. Finally today, I'm going to pull an angel prayers card for all of us and see what comes through. I feel this one wants to come through. Ah, oh, I think we got that last week too. That's great. So the card that came out is trust your vibes. Trust your vibes. You are, okay, so two more. You are, oh, oh, oh my God. Okay, like, it just so beautiful. Like, thank you guys. I'm so grateful for the love and support that surrounds me. I'm so grateful for the confirmation I receive, and I'm so grateful for my connection to all of you on this page who are here with me now and who will be connecting with me later. Thank you so much for your presence in my life. You're truly a gift. So this is Trust Your Vibes, and this is what we've been talking about. Trust your heart. Your heart knows. This page is called Wisdom of the Heart, Soul, Alchemy. And when I was guided to create this page back in... 2010 they told I heard the name wisdom of the heart and then when I was trying to come up with a, um, a logo the, um, for the page for my cards etc what they showed me was a compass over my heart I played with some images like that it just didn't really nothing has resonated with me yet but this is our guide and I don't feel that many of us have been shown that and taught that along the way, that our heart is our guide. Your heart is your guide. And it was the intended guide. And this is where your higher self, your star family, your creator, everything speaks to you through your heart, not in your head. Like there's a reason, you know, like mental illness is prevalent on the planet, right? Because so many, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, um, disregarding the the fact that there are mental illnesses and they're real and all of that what I'm saying is if we could teach each other from early on if we were taught if we taught our children from early on that their heart was the guide they may not get stuck up in the jumble of the head and we only use 10% of our brain so I mean there's a lot to get lost in in there so the heart is your guide trust your vibes and your vibes are your gut feelings, um, your instincts, trust them because these are, and when you don't, please know, please know, this is part of the beauty of being human. We have choices to make all the time and we can get a gut feeling, uh, an, a something that tells us, no, this isn't the path for me. And we can still choose to walk that path because it looks like more fun than this path that we know is in fact the true path for us. 
We can take a detour. We can take a side trip. But there are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts in our journey of healing, okay? There are no shortcuts to ascension and to being an enlightened human being. We have to master. We have to walk the path of mastery in our own life. And it begins with trusting your beautiful, beautiful heart. Wise and beautiful. Directly connected to source. Always has been. Always will be. Thank you, angels. Today I choose to trust my intuition and your guidance. Next out. We had this, which is right along the same lines. Archangel Shamil. 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 I don't know. I never, I, I mess up names all the time. <laughs> but again, what I'm connecting with here is like the outfit here is red. So this really speaks to me of connecting your heart to the earth. Connecting your heart chakra to the chakra of Mother Earth through the soles of your feet. Make this connection and allow this connection to really be that which supports you. Really be that, let it be that grounded connection that guides you. Let it be that connection, I'm glad. <laughs> um, let it be that connection that inspires you, your connection to the earth. It's so beautiful. Mother Earth is absolutely stunningly beautiful. And she's a beautiful reflection of us too. If we take the time to see our reflection in the natural world around us. It's time to make that reconnection to the natural world. And don't be afraid to open your heart because as I've said, your vulnerability, your sensitivity, your heart is the most beautiful place on this planet. It's the most supportive place for you and the most trustworthy guide that you have is your amazing, amazing heart. It says, thank you, Shamil, for removing the barriers around my heart. And then in comes Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael. I love him. He is my forever friend. He's been a lifelong guide. And I'm so grateful for his presence. And he encourages us to find our voice and to use our voice for good. To use our voice. He also um, encourages us to accept our truth. And sometimes the voices in our head aren't all that truthful. And we deny certain aspects of ourselves. Like the shadow. Because we don't want to see. It's so scary, right? No, it's not. It's be as a result of the shadow that we find the light. I, lo I love that you got goosebumps. I've got goosebumps all over my body. But I'm kind of sweating here a little bit too. <laughs> sweating. Whew. Um, but I love that he's come through as, after it says, this guy tells us removing barriers around our heart. And then we've got the beautiful angel of protection, strength, courage, and protection, Archangel Michael. And I believe Archangel Michael works with um, all of us who are here as star seeds, all of us who are here, as, uh, bring, um, um, who are here on Mother Earth as bringers of light to anchor heaven on earth. He supports us all and don't, because he's always with me, don't feel like he can't be with you. He is multidimensional and he is everywhere. And I have no doubt if you feel connected to Archangel Michael, that's because he's right there with you. He gave me a wonderful exercise a number of years ago. I was having some um, trouble with boundary setting, Pamela. I was having some troubles with boundary setting and as an empath, I was having, um, I was still learning how to, um, you know, decipher what was mine and what was somebody else's because I was feeling a lot of stuff from the collective, particularly when I started this page back in the day when I used to do free readings all the time here. So many were plugged in to me. And I couldn't, you know, figure out how to protect myself. And not that I needed protection because someone wanted to hurt me. That's foolishness. We shouldn't think that because most people, we're safe and protected when we trust and follow our heart. So we have to get away from this idea that there's somebody out there to get us. It would only be in here. <laughs> so what he did and what he showed me, I'm going to stand up and see if I can show you. So he told me to stand up and put my arms out like this. So I did, and he said, turn around in a circle. So I did, arms extended, and he said to me, and then he said, go the other way. So I did. Whew. He said, that, dear Lisa, is the space you are responsible for. 
you're not responsible for what goes on out there. And so many of us feel responsible. He said to me, put your arms out, turn around, clear your energy, do some smudging of yourself, get some crystals that you feel are supportive to you and reclaim your space. And so I had to do a lot of work with him with cord cuttings um, and I never really see I hesitated because I'm not big on violence so I'm like oh a cord cutting that seems so harsh you know we'll just dissolve those cords well that didn't work and I found out in the last couple of years not that it didn't work because it certainly offered me relief at the time um, I did find out over time though that sometimes with a dissolved cord someone can just plug into you again. So I actually in fact a couple of years ago was told I needed to cut some particular cords and I did and thank the goddess what a beautiful gift he gave me because it in fact worked and this is what I mean like when we trust and honor our intuition when we trust and honor the inner guidance we're receiving life it goes really well for us and we'll be amazed at the results when we don't trust and honor what we're feeling and what we're receiving we do a huge disservice to ourselves and in fact to the gifts within us that want to open up and be expressed so know that you are protected and safe when you trust and follow your heart and this is beautiful because it is this card didn't come through, but this message certainly came through for um, the moon circle, for our most recent moon circle. This message was there, loud and clear. To trust and follow your heart, you are safe and protected when you honor what you feel in your heart. And it's really time to bring forth your creation using your compassionate voice to offer love into the world. So if you are feeling that you're struggling and that you need some additional support, call on this beloved guide. I have complete faith in him. I believe in him. Uh, that is so awesome. Someone is saying, uh, Dana is saying that Archangel Michael had her do the same thing that I just showed and I just got goosebumps all over me again. Um, and my eyes are wanting to leak again because this is like we are all so connected and we're all receiving and we have to be uh, we have to believe in ourselves and there is no time like the present to believe in yourself let what's back there stay in the back take the love that is still present and move forward in joy move forward in confidence in your abilities and move forward in the knowing that you are worthy and beautiful divine child of creation here on mother earth to plant his or her seed of love and light. Uh, so it says, thank you, Archangel Michael, for um, surrounding me with your protective light. And I thank you all for being here today and surrounding me and shining your beautiful light on me. It's truly my honor and privilege to share. And if I can be of support to you in any other way through personal readings or energy work or anything that you feel I can support you with, don't hesitate to reach out and ask for the help that you may need. I'm not uh, I'm not saying like I'm going to have all your answers, but I will certainly be able to tap in and tune into your energy field and um, offer some love and support for you. So with that being said, I hope you all have a beautiful week. If you um, uh, spinning to your left clears one energy, right? Yay. Um, so I'll be back on this page tomorrow. Stay tuned. I will be doing some short little um, card pulls. I'll probably be on the page for about an hour at some point tomorrow, likely in the earlier part of the day before noon. So it's two o'clock in the afternoon here now. So have a watch for that. Please do um, like, comment and share. I love connecting with you. I love the fact that we are here on Mother Earth now and together as one we rise. I love you all. Sending so much gratitude.